Hey everybody, this is John Costigan. In this segment, I know it's probably going to be a unique name, but it's called Hope. Um, you know, I've, I have, it's about hope in sales and how this can help you if you change your opinion on this a little bit. You know, I've done a couple takes on this because I want to make sure it was really clear. And when I was watching it back, I, I referenced my five set CD called What to Say and How to Say. It. And as I'm watching the tape, when I get done, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's right there. I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's on the wall back there. And I completely forgot it was, but, um, it was with this really young guy, like 15 years ago, who was really young. And, but I, the reason why I'm referencing that CD is because back then I used to say, yes, is a great answer. No is a good answer and maybe stinks. And let me stop. I still agree with that. Okay. But the one thing I want to say is this time does kill all deals. Okay. I agree that, but I agree with that, but do me a favor. Don't kill yourself on the deal. And I know that sounds weird, but don't do something that's going to kill your opportunity to win the deal because you were so darn pushy on trying to follow this. Yes is great. No is good. And maybe stinks. And I always say, make sure you get the no early on so you don't exhaust your resources. Well, I've seen people sometimes mess up and they, they go for the no so hard they get the no. You know, I know there's concepts like, hey, go for the no. I get it. I, I, I love that too. Get the no early. But sometimes you've done it so hard that you're getting a lot of no's. And sure, it, it, there can be something that's liberating about it. Absolutely. It's kind of nice when you get to hang up and go, cool, great. I, you know, there's no, we've lost. Great. I'm glad I found out early. We can now move on. And there's not a lot of situations where that works. But the reason why I mentioned about hope is a good thing is because it's not a no. And I want to make sure that you're not losing the deal because you tried, you tried to follow this darn methodology 15 years ago and you pushed so darn hard that you got the no. I mean, you got a great company and a great product. Just make sure that you're the one who doesn't screw this up because you, by going for this concept. You know, uh, one of my favorite, favorite movies is Shawshank Redemption. Most of you have probably seen a phenomenal movie. And right towards the end, um, you know, Morgan Freeman's underneath a, underneath a tree by a rock wall. And he's reading this note that was left to him by Tim Robbins when he escaped from prison. And he's reading it. Of course, you hear Tim Robbins' words as Morgan's reading it. It says, you know, Red, and that's his character's name. He goes, you know, Red, remember what I said? Hope is a good thing. Maybe the best of things. Um I don't know if it's the best of things in sales, but it definitely plays a role. Don't don't lose your opportunity because you're trying to push so hard to get the no that you might have gotten a yes a little bit farther down the road, but you were impatient. Okay, I'm also a big believer that yes, it, it, if you want to stay in front of them, I mean, it, it requires nothing to put that in your tickler file, put it two or three weeks two or three weeks out. Don't put it in a forecast. Obviously, it's not a real opportunity, but you stay engaged. You send a white paper. You bring value. You just don't keep going. Hey, how you doing? There's a whole different thing you could do there about giving them value, giving them information where they're looking at you as a resource. Uh, that's what you want. But that takes nothing. It's a quick email every three weeks or so. Stay in front of them. I, I'll stay Hope Alley there just to do that. So I would stay with Hope on that. Okay, but when they say, why don't you fly out? Um, I need to have more of this. Give me a proposal. Then you can get back on the phone and qualify a little bit harder because maybe they now have a need and they've cracked open the door. I will tell you just before we leave, um, we had a sales rep. For one of my largest clients, a software company up in Burlington, uh, Burlington, Massachusetts, where this rep stayed engaged and they virtually said, nope, we're with, you know, we're with their number one competitor. He goes, we're with these folks. We've been in forever. We're not going to uh, we're not going to change. And he just stayed in there and he just stayed in there, kept staying and sent an email about every three, four weeks. And his name's Mark. This is the rep's name. Well, next thing you know, he pinged this person and the VP called him up and said, you know something? They just screwed up. You just, you just, you just got another shot to get back in and they nailed this deal and it was huge. The deal was so big, it probably should have gone to the field, but since this inside rep did such a great job, they wanted to work with him. So hope isn't, it's not great, but it's not as bad as I probably made it sound out way back, the way I made it sound way back then. So hope is a good thing. Good selling everybody. Hey everybody, John Costigan here. The toughest part to any sale is getting in the door, right? Tell you what, click on the URL below this video or go to costigantraining.com slash free week. Take the first step of solving this huge problem of getting in the door. It's five days, five clips, less than five minutes. Click on the link. We'll see you in a few seconds.